Hello, my name is Joe Hildreth and welcome to episode 14 of CNC for the Home Hobbyist. In this episode I'll explain how to calculate the number of steps that are required by the stepper motor to move an axis of a machine one machine unit. Please keep in mind that I'm not a teacher, an engineer, or a machinist, but rather a home hobbyist that would like to share my experience using Linux CNC as a controller and CNC controlled machines for the home shop. As I release these videos on various topics over time, it's my hope that other hobbyists can use the information in their attempts to make their own CNC machines. I hope through the course of these videos that the learning curve will be flattened somewhat. Additionally, perhaps some folks will avoid some of the more common problems that I encountered along the way. With that out of the way, let's get started. In my last video, number 13, titled Linear Motion, I told you that it would be simplest to select the machine unit based on the unit of your lead screw. I've since learned that I was in error when I told you this. The machine unit you select for your machine should reflect the unit that the bulk of your tooling is. For example, if the vast majority of your tooling is imperial, you should select inch as the machine unit, or if the majority of your tooling is metric, you should select millimeter as your machine unit. The reason for this choice has to do with the tool table that Linux CNC uses when using offsets for cutter compensations and other features. This way, even if you have to do a unit conversion on your linear system, the entries for your tooling will be in their native units. I want to thank Art Eckstein for initially pointing this error out to me. Thank you, Art. And I additionally want to thank the members of the Linux CNC development community for confirming this operating characteristic to me. Hey, thanks, fellas, ladies. You may be asking yourself, why calculate the steps per machine unit? It could, I suppose, be argued that calculating the steps required to move the axes one machine unit is a waste of time, and if you're using the step comp utility, it's not even required. However, I would submit to you that going through the exercise will provide you with a sanity check on the numbers that the step comp utility calculates, and it is vital later when tweaking the final results of your machine for fine tuning. Finally, if you heavily modify your configuration, you won't even be able to use the step comp utility to make any more changes, and if you did, it would blow away all your custom modifications. For these exercises, we're going to assume that the stepper motor that we'll be using will have 200 steps per revolution, and that the stepper driver will be set to quarter stepping, meaning that it will require four steps to make one step on the motor. Using this means that for one revolution of the motor will require 800 steps. 200 whole motor steps times 4 micro steps per step to make one revolution. These settings are only for the exercises that follow. You may have a motor with more or less whole steps per revolution or you may use a different micro step setting on your driver. You'll need to use your values in your actual calculations. In our first example, we will imagine that our axis of interest has an imperial lead screw. This lead screw is a half inch 10 Acme threaded rod with a single start or thread. Furthermore, our tooling is imperial. We know from the way that Linux CNC works with the tool table that we want to set the machine units to the same system as our tooling, in this case the inch. So let's calculate how many steps it takes to move the axis one inch. We see from above that the lead screw is expressed in TPI, or threads per inch, and that it contains a single start, or only one thread. We know from this that the screw will have to make 10 revolutions for the nut to travel one inch. This, coupled with the knowledge of the stepper motor steps per revolution and the micro-stepping settings that we've enabled on the driver, we have enough information to figure out how many steps it will take to move the lead screw nut one inch. 200 steps per revolution of the motor times 4 micro-steps per motor step times 10 turns of the lead screw equals 8,000 steps per inch. If, however, most of our tooling was in metric, we would need to calculate the steps per millimeter. This can be calculated in two ways. 
Since we know the steps per inch of travel, we can divide this number by 25.4 to give us the steps per millimeter. 8,000 divided by 25.4 equals 314.96 steps per millimeter. This seems the most intuitive way to do it, but a formula to figure out the steps per millimeter would be the number of steps to rotate the motor one revolution times the TPI of the screw divided by 25.4. Let's work that out. 200 steps per revolution of the stepper motor times 4 microsteps times 10 TPI divided by 25.4 we get 314.96 steps per millimeter. The same answer is above. In this example, let's assume that we have an M10 by 1 2 start lead screw and the majority of our tooling is in metric. Here we see that the metric lead screw has a pitch of one millimeter between the thread crests, but the screw has two starts, or threads. From our earlier discussion on linear motion, we know that the distance the nut will travel will be the number of starts times the pitch of the screw. So in our case, the nut will travel two millimeters per revolution of the screw. To calculate the steps per millimeter, we simply take the steps to rotate the motor one revolution and divide by the lead of the screw. So, 800 divided by 2 equals 400 steps per millimeter. Simple, right? If, on the other hand, our tooling was primarily imperial, we would want our answer to reflect steps per inch. We can do this by multiplying our answer above by 25.4. So. 400 times 25.4 equals 10,160 steps per inch. We can calculate this directly by taking the steps per revolution of the motor times 25.4 and dividing by the lead in millimeters. So, 800 times 25.4 divided by 2 equals 10,160 steps per inch. The same answer is above. In this example, we imagine that we have a gear reduction set up with a 20 tooth pinion pulley on the stepper motor and a 40 tooth pulley that is connected to the end of the lead screw. The lead screw is an M24 by 3 single start screw. Furthermore, our tooling is primarily metric. This problem is similar to just a lead screw with the exception that we have a gear reduction. We start with the gear reduction and it's expressed as a fraction of driven divided by driver. Since the stepper motor is driving the system, we know that the 20 tooth pulley is the driver and the remaining pulley is the driven. This gives us a reduction of 40 divided by 20 which reduces to 2. Next, we multiply by the number of steps to rotate the motor one revolution, in our case 800. At this point we have 2 times 800 which equals 1600 steps to rotate the screw one revolution. Finally, we divide this by the pitch of the screw to find the steps per millimeter. So, 1600 divided by 3 gives us 533.333 steps per millimeter. If our tooling is imperial and we wanted steps per inch, we only need to multiply the result by 25.4. So, 533.333 times 25.4 equals 13,546.658 steps per inch. Or, if you like, it can be calculated by taking the gear ratio times the stepper motor steps per revolution times 25.4 and dividing by the lead of the screw in millimeters. This gives us 40 divided by 20 times 800 times 25.4 divided by 3, which equals 13,546.67. The answer is essentially the same but differs slightly because of the rounding of the original answer. In this example, we imagine that we have a gear reduction set up with a 20 tooth pinion pulley on the stepper motor and a 50 tooth pulley that is connected to the end of the lead screw. The lead screw is a half inch 10 
five start screw and our tooling is mostly imperial. The solution to this example starts just like the previous example. We start with a gear reduction. Again, the driver is the geared pulley attached to the stepper motor, in this case 20 teeth, and the driven is the 50 tooth pulley attached to the lead screw. Recall the formula is driven divided by driver times the steps for one complete motor revolution. This gives us 50 divided by 20 times 800, which equals 2000. This is the number of steps required to turn the lead screw one revolution. Now, the lead screw is a half inch 10, meaning that it has 10 threads to the inch, but it has five starts. Recall, to calculate the lead, we multiply the pitch by the number of starts. In this case, the pitch is 1 divided by 10, giving us 0.100 inches. And 0 0.100 times 5 is equal to 0 0.500 inches. This means that the nut will travel 1 half inch for every revolution of the, that the screw makes. To find the number of revolutions the screw needs to make to travel 1 inch, divide 1 by the lead of the screw. So, 1 divided by 0 0.500 gives us 2 turns. Finally, the steps per inch can be finished by taking the 2,000 steps to turn the screw one revolution and multiply it by the number of revolutions required to move the nut one inch. This gives us 2,000 times 2, which equals 4,000 steps per inch. If you want a formula, it's driven divided by driver times the steps per revolution times the TPI divided by starts. To find the steps per millimeter, we can divide our result by 25.4, which gives us 4,000 divided by 25.4 equals 157.48 steps per millimeter. This can be calculated directly with the formula driven divided by driver times steps per revolution times TPI divided by starts times 1 divided by 25.4. Well, I think that's enough math for one day. How about you? Well, where to from here? In this video I covered most of the common calculations you would need for a lead screw or a lead screw that may be connected to a gear reduction. I still need to cover rack and pinion calculations and that will be the topic of the next video. Again, I'm trying to keep these videos in small digestible chunks. We are very near to the point where I'll start talking about the step comp utility and how to set up your machine using it. Hang in there. We're making progress. As always, thanks for taking the time from your busy life to watch my videos. If the videos I produce help you, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. CNC is an exciting and rewarding addition to the home shop. And if you have friends who are thinking of getting into it, please consider sending them my way. Other than that, have a blessed day.